Hey guys, welcome back to a quick video. And no, this is not clickbait. I have some reasoning to back this statement up. Now, I, I want to clear up something. Of course, something up. Sorry, that came out wrong. I do not think that Alaska in the Senate is going to go blue in 2020. I do think it's going to be exceptionally close, considering um, a few things. And I'm going to get started. Uh, just a quick uh, announcement. Yes, I had 100 subscribers. Uh, this morning, it is so awesome. I did not think w w we'd get here so fast. So thank you uh, for subscribing. I sent out a Google form this morning, uh, part one of the subscriber decide election night. We get to pick the candidates. If you have not filled that out, don't worry. It is uh, it is uh, due uh, by Friday, four thirty Pacific time, seven thirty Eastern time. So you still have time to, f to fill it out uh, at the time of this video. So um, yeah, let's get started. So um. Uh, so according uh, to uh, trusty Wikipedia, um, in our most recent Senate election, uh, when you uh, look at the map, county uh, county map, as you can see, I pulled up uh, pulled up here on map chart. Um, Lisa Markowski, she won all of these counties. So let's do uh, Alaska. Oops, uh, color that state red. And there was no there was no significant Democrat running. Uh, it was an interesting race because Lisa Murkowski won with 44% of the vote back in 2016. And then Joe Miller, the Libertarian, got 30% of the vote. Um, let's use uh, Orange, uh, 30% Joe Miller. He won um, two counties. He won, um, I believe he won Anchorage. I'm checking Wikipedia. Yeah, he, uh, he won uh, that county. I'm not going to try to pronounce that. I'm not very good w with Alaskan geography. And he won Anchorage County. If it lets me click that, nope, that wrong county. Oops, so sorry. Um, so yeah, uh, and then other than that, no one else won any counties. Now Ray Metcalf of the Democrat who ran, he got eleven percent of the vote, and Margaret Stock and Independent got thirteen percent of the vote. Uh, but it was only Miller and Murkowski who really uh had a chance at winning this race. Now that's a weird race. So if you want to go back to a competitive election, twenty fourteen, uh, excuse me, uh. Ugh, I that was awkward. Uh, uh, there was an incumbent Democrat, Mark Bagich, who ran against Dan Sullivan. Now, uh, Bagich actually did pretty well. Uh, let's uh, color the state of Alaska red, and then we'll fill out the, the blue counties. Bagich did pretty well in Alaska. Now he lost, uh, but he did pretty well uh, county wise, and, and he lost by only five thousand votes, I believe. Yeah, he lost. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, by 6,000 votes, which, again, doesn't seem like a lot, but Alaska only has a population of, I think, 700,000 people. But it's, it's still a very close race. Uh, now, th now, there was low voter turnout uh, in 2014, which did not help the Democratic Party that year. But overall, I mean, uh, they, uh, in Alaska, they didn't do horribly uh, by today's standards. So uh, that's what the county map looked like. Um, if you want to, oh, oops. I did not finish filling out uh, the lower peninsula. Alaska's counties are weird to find, so uh, please excuse my errors. Uh, yeah, so uh, the map looked like that. Um, so uh, Dan Sullivan got 6,000 more votes, and he beat Baggage, the incumbent. So if you want to say that uh, that was a high point in Alaska, go ahead and say that. But I have a lot of reasoning to back this up. So the Democrats are running Dr. Al Gross, uh, who is a very strong candidate uh, for the job. I originally had this race as safe Republican, and I learned more more, more about the race. I, I moved it back to likely Republican. I'm not putting it in the lean column. I believe uh, that uh, th this could go either way, but I think it will be accurate to predict a, a three-point uh, Sullivan win. Now, uh, since 2016, um, there was no uh, 2018 Alaska Senate race, just so you know. There are 40,000 new, um, new registered voters in Alaska. Mark Bagich in 2014, he only lost that race by 5,000, 6,000 votes. 40,000 new voters, most of whom are young voters, and they list climate change as, as their number one issue. And guess what? When you're voting based on climate change, chances are you're voting for a Democrat because Democrats um, uh, talk about climate change a lot more than the Republicans do. And uh, the younger generation is very passionate about this issue, and they're coming out in big numbers for the Democratic candidates. Uh, specifically progressives like Bernie Sanders. Now, Dr. Algros is an independent, and um, just so you know, in Alaska, uh, they do it so that the independent candidate um, is endorsed by the Democrats because they just want anyone except a Republican. This is a two-way race. Um, 
So it's, it's going to be the independent party of, or just the independents from Alaska. And the Democrats are going to be backing Gross, whereas only the Republicans are, are going to be backing Dan Sullivan. Now, um, this is a Republican state in presidential elections, but the margins are weird. I mean, Donald Trump, he only got 51% of the vote here. Um, and if you want to look uh, at previous elections, Bill Walker, who was an independent, he he, had, he was the governor until 2018 when he lost that race. He was the governor of Alaska. He was an independent, but he, uh, he, but he uh, was more of a Democrat. Um Mark Bagich, he won there in 2008 against Ted Stevens, who, yes, he had some scandals, but still a good win for the for the Democrats. And 57% of registered voters in Alaska are, are, are independents. That is a huge majority. Now, the Republicans, um, about a third of registered voters um, in, no, uh, sorry, 25% of voters in Alaska are, are registered Republicans, but most of them are independents, and they, they do tend to lean liberal. Now, uh, like me, many other uh, election election forecasters uh, had this race as safe Republican at the beginning. Now it's changing. They are um, they are uh, rating this um, race uh, as um, they are uh, bringing this race. I didn't want to do that. They're bringing this race uh, back towards the Democrats. Some have it as likely. Some have it as lean. I'm putting it in the lean column because I may have a bit of a bias because I've heard a Dr. Al Gross speak. And I think he's a very good speaker. I mean, uh, he is a good candidate uh, for the Democrats in Alaska. But um, I really do think that he has a very good shot at winning. I say he has a 45% chance of winning in a solid red state. Um, and uh, I don't call this a two-way race, really. But a new can- but a new third-party candidate uh, just filed to run a few days ago. Uh, I don't know his name. Uh, it- I don't know the gentleman's name, but he is a member of the Alaskan Independence Party, a party that wants more independence for Alaska and kind of moved away from the union. Uh, they draw voters from the far right. I mean, I'm, I'm talking the far right, uh, like further to the right than uh, Donald Trump is. Um, so that's that, that's only going to hurt Dan Sullivan. And uh, Dan Sullivan, he has a 42% approval rating. 42% approval rating in the red state. That's not good for him. And in 2019, um, a ton of Alaskans filed uh, for a petition. Uh, or They... Uh, signed a petition, tens of thousands of Alaskans, to force Mike Dunleavy, uh, the incumbent Republican governor of Alaska, to resign because of some stuff he did, which I'm not going to talk about. Now, um, as I mentioned before, most election forecasters have this as a likely or lean uh, red state uh, trending. They believe it's trending uh, towards the left, uh, but still a red state. Now, Nestler.org, with one S, um, N-E-S-L-E-R.org, the analyst center races now it's not very well known but i checked but i saw it they believe uh, that dr gross is going to win this race by eight points eight points it's a pretty bold statement i just want to throw it out there um so yeah this is not clickbait for the record i have actual evidence to back this up i'm not i'm, I'm not going off uh my gut and i just just because i think that alaska is a cool state and uh, i'm a democrat so i think it's going to go blue no i'm, I'm doing it off of, uh uh, facts in in 2018, it, uh, the Democrats came close uh, to, to winning the governorship, and I do expect this to go to the Republicans narrowly. But uh, do, but do not count Dr. Al Gross out. He has the independent vote. He has the Democratic vote, um, and a third party candidate filed to run it. Uh, only going to take away votes from the Republican Party. He can win this race. Uh, Mark Bagich, he only lost that race by 6,000 votes in 2014 in a red wave year in Alaska. I think he can win this race. I counted him out early. I made that mistake. Um, if Dr. Gross, if you're watching this, I apologize. But now I believe that he has a very good chance of winning this. And this uh, seat could very well flip blue, especially if the Republicans ignore it. Ignore it. The Democrats are not ignoring it. Um, they're holding fundraisers, uh, obviously virtually across Alaska. Um, and Dan... Or, Dr. Gross's campaign says they need $8 million to win this race. They're more than halfway there, and it's only uh, it, it's only June. It's only early June, and um, they are going to receive a lot of out-of-state contributions. I think the Democrats are uh, quietly focusing on this race a little bit. You know, not as much as maybe Montana or Colorado or Arizona or Maine, but uh, this is certainly this race is, is, is going to be uh, a sleeper for the Republicans. Uh, and I would say... And I'm putting it in the lean Republican column. I'm I I couldn't I I'm considering moving it to the tilt as of right now. I'm putting it in the lean column. This could very well flip to the Democrats. Uh, so 
yeah, I just wanted to make this video. I hope you all enjoyed. To my subscribers, thank you so much. If you're considering subscribing, please do subscribe for daily videos. A triple upload today, but two, but I don't really count that because two of those videos were Google Form reminders and guidelines for it. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see. Uh, this is my final county map prediction, by the way. Or sorry, uh, that's Baygitch versus um, uh, Baygitch versus uh, the incumbent Dan Sullivan, who, by the way, Dan Sullivan. He was not even born in Alaska. He was born in Ohio and, and, and moved there three years prior to becoming senator, which is interesting. Um, this is my prediction. I believe it, it's going to look something like this uh, with a narrow win for um, um, for Dan Sullivan. Um, I could change it. I could even put it in favor of Gross. I'm not going to do that yet, but he could very well win, and I believe he has a very good chance at winning this. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.